could Lucifer lose his immortality? Will Ella uncover the devil's secret? And who will end up ruler of hell by the end of the series? yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video we're investigating 16 incredible yet possible theories and predictions that could change everything for the final two seasons of Lucifer. We'll be talking spoilers, so take care if you're not caught up. This is gonna be good. Yeah, I'll have some of that. A big moment in the first part of season 5 comes when Lucifer regains his invulnerability around Chloe. Dan shoots the devil with Chloe nearby, but Lucifer emerges unscathed and rather pleased with the outcome, even offering himself up as a devil shield to the detective. But there was an important moment earlier in season 5 that suggests this development could go into reverse, with Lucifer choosing to forsake his invulnerability entirely to become a mortal being. In the noir episode, Lilith gives up her immortality breathing into her ring that she gives Lucifer, and explains an insight she's gleaned from her thousands of years living among humans. They all think they want to live forever, but they already have something so much more precious. It's knowing there's an end. That's what makes the rest of it count. That's what connects them. To one another. Likewise, in season three, we heard Cain, aka Marcus Pierce, compare immortality to hell. I have walked this earth for thousands of years. I have seen everything. I have done everything. That's almost like you're in hell. Yeah. Now that Lucifer and Chloe are a couple, what could be worse for Lucifer than watching Chloe eventually die and then continuing to live for an eternity without her? Back in 1946, when Lilith asked Lucifer if he'd ever made an emotional connection with a human, Lucy scoffed at the notion. Oh, it would take a literal miracle for me to want something like that. I'm fairly certain my father's not handing those out anymore. But of course, that did happen. So could Lucifer decide to follow Lilith's example and give up his own immortality so that he and Chloe can grow old together? Or alternatively, could Chloe become immortal from the ring? But then what about Trixie? Another outcome that could solve all that is Lucifer being forgiven for his rebellion and being able to return to the Silver City when he wishes, so that when Chloe eventually dies, they can be together there as well. In Season 5, while Lucy returns to Earth to deal with Michael, Amenadiel takes his place in Hell to keep the demons in check. But to Lucifer's surprise, in the fifth episode, he discovers Amenadiel's back with Linda, and when Lucy demands to know why he's left Hell unguarded, Amenadiel explains, There I was, wandering the corridors of Hell, when I heard a voice, a voice that I never expected to hear in Hell. According to Amenadiel, that voice was God, who told him that Hell no longer needed a warden. When I first saw this scene, it struck me as odd, given that having a proper ruler watching over the underworld was such an important plot point for season 4. And given that Amenadiel says he thought that it was strange to hear God's voice in Hell, I wonder whether Michael sneaked into Hell and impersonated God's voice to fool Amenadiel into leaving the underworld without a ruler again. This could be yet another trick Michael has pulled to make Lucy look bad in front of their father. We know Michael can easily switch accents, and we already saw him performing this trick on Dan when he called his phone pretending to be Lucifer, so that Dan would see Lucy's devil face. Now that Dan's discovered Lucifer's true identity, out of the main cast, only Ella is still unaware that Lucy is literally the devil. However, I expect that will change when she finally finds out by the end of season 5. And given Ella's religious beliefs, I think this moment could be an even bigger shock for her than it was for Chloe or Dan or Linda. Ella says she grew up among criminals and dirtbags, but that when she turned to God, it set her on a better path. So her reaction when she finds out she's been living alongside the devil as his friend in LA will be very interesting. Of course, this isn't the first time Ella's unwittingly befriended a celestial, as her ghost friend Ray Ray was actually Lucy's angel sister Azriel. Ella also has this dark side to her which the show played up a lot more in season 5, with her attraction to what she calls bad guys. And then there was Pete, the seemingly nice guy secret serial killer, who also said he saw darkness in Ella. And there was a very interesting moment in the Diablo scene when Ella finds a prop weapon supposed to be the only blade that can kill the devil and then proceeds to attack Lucifer with the rubber blade. Hey! -ya! Hmm. Sorry. That seemed a lot funnier in my head. I'm sure. Now, obviously, the moment is played for laughs here, but could it also be a little bit of foreshadowing for Ella trying to attack the devil when she discovers him on Earth? By the end of the series, I expect we will find someone in charge of Hell who isn't Lucifer, as I think God will at some point recognise that he's done enough to serve out his punishment. The most likely candidate at this point is Michael, because once his dastardly schemes against Lucifer are revealed to God, he would surely get banished from heaven and perhaps sent to the underworld to rule in Lucifer's place. 
A possible though less obvious option for new ruler of Hell would be Maze. She was already keen to go back to Hell in season 1, but Lucifer insisted they stay in LA, and so she decided to find a purpose for herself as a bounty hunter. And at the start of season 5, Maze is mad at Lucy for going down to Hell without her. The technical problem with Maze taking over Down Under is that she's a demon, so theoretically it would break this rule. Hell was built so that no demon could take control of the throne, only a celestial could rule. But given everything that happens in the show, it's not impossible for this rule to be broken if the writers wanted to make it work. Something that could play into this is Maze discovering that she isn't an ordinary demon and does actually have a soul. In fact, there was a hint to this in the Mr. and Mrs. Mazikeen Smith episode of season three. When you kill, you lose a piece of your soul. I get the feeling you understand that. Sorry, no soul here. It's not what I see. My other theory is that Maze will resolve her existential angst via the ring her mother Lilith gave Lucifer. And I go into detail about that in my ending explained video. Maze is such a fan favourite that I expect she'll eventually find her soulmate by the end of the series. At the moment, Eve seems like the best option for Maze, as they already formed a connection in Season 4. And if Maze is also in charge of Hell, then I can definitely see Eve joining her there, as she enjoyed helping Lucy punish sinners when she was with him on Earth. And then Kinley also suggested she could be Queen of Hell with Lucifer, so why not with Maze instead? A character who might not make it out of the series alive is Dan, though he could still get a happy ending of sorts, reuniting with Charlotte in heaven. In the first episode of season 5, we see that despite his attempts to be positive, Dan is still struggling to get over Charlotte's death from season 3. I think Dan will get a special moment to shine before the end of the series, perhaps playing a crucial part in defeating Michael, as Lucifer saw an unusual strength in Dan when he was wielding the powerful divine weapon Asriel's blade in season 2. You're fighting the blade? which indicates a strength I didn't know you had. If Michael was able to send a Menadiel into a fear spiral that made his time manipulation powers go crazy, could it be possible that Michael's fear mojo was also to blame for that mysterious moment in season four when Lucifer's mojo powers went haywire? At the time, Lucifer's self-hatred and fear that Chloe couldn't accept him for who he truly was meant he began transforming physically into his full devil form. But a side effect was that everyone in Lux started to tell him what they desired, even though he wasn't asking them. Michael seems to like lurking in the shadows, hidden from view, and in season 5 there was that moment where he vanishes into the crowd at Lux. Indeed, Lucifer himself also commented that Michael enjoys hiding himself away. I've passed his prologue, he's probably hidden himself off somewhere to laugh about the mess he's made. So perhaps Michael has been around longer than we know, causing havoc and triggering events like Lucifer's mojo going wrong in season 4. After all, he did tell Lucifer that he's basically been manipulating him since the dawn of time. Something which is still a mystery about Michael is the reason for his slopey shoulder, as Lucifer calls it. I expect the backstory to this will be revealed in the second part of season 5, and it may be an injury he suffered during Lucy's rebellion against God. If Lucifer does have anything to do with it, then of course it will be yet another of Michael's grievances towards his brother. The moment many Deckerstar fans waited five seasons for finally happened when Lucifer and Chloe did the deed and discovered that Hell didn't freeze over. But what are the chances that Chloe could now be pregnant with Lucifer's child? It already happened to Amenadiel and Linda on the show, and Lucifer even joked about it when Chloe found herself naked in Lucifer's bed in the first season. But I'm pretty sure we made Rosemary's baby. I don't think this will be a main plot point, as it could feel like too much of a repeat of Charlie's storyline, and it's not something I'm especially keen to see myself. However, there are fans who would like this, so it could be something that happens at the very end of the series as a kind of epilogue, if Lucifer and Chloe settle down together. Speaking of which, it's entirely possible we'll see the devilish couple tie the knot before the show's over. The Diablo episode is packed with many comical meta moments as Lucifer and Chloe investigate a murder on a TV show inspired by their own partnership. During the case, Lucifer chances upon a script for an unaired episode called Diablo in Space, and when he and Dan act out the script, they read out the line, A Devil in the Heavens, which makes me wonder if we can look forward to a Lucifer episode that's actually set in heaven. And I go into lots more detail about that hilarious episode, including all the little Easter eggs and details in my Season 5 Things You Missed video. Tap the card here or follow the link in the video description. 
Perhaps the upcoming musical episode titled Bloody Celestial Karaoke Jam will end up taking place in heaven, where we'll get to meet another of Lucifer's siblings, Castile. When Remy arrived on Earth in season 4, Amenadiel made reference to Castile's love of song, so it feels like this will be the appropriate episode to introduce the character. What brings you to Earth? Need a break from Castile's singing? And wouldn't it also be great if we got to see Asriel again, especially as Charlene Yee was just fantastic in that role in season 3. The ending of Season 5 Part 1 seemingly reveals that Charlie isn't a half-angel as we'd assumed, because he got sick with a fever and a cold. However, I think there's something else going on here which caused Charlie's illness. The clue is in the episode just before when Amenadiel is talking to Linda about how content he is being a father and looking after Charlie. Linda agrees, but then tells him to enjoy the moment while it lasts, and then says that if they do a good job as parents, Charlie will need them less and less every day. Amenadiel seems somewhat perturbed by this realisation, and given we know that Michael was trying to trigger his fears, could Amenadiel have subconsciously accidentally made Charlie ill? Michael's fear mojo was powerful enough to cause Amenadiel's time control powers to spiral out of control, so what else could they have affected? However, my alternate theory on the cause of Charlie's illness is that it's related to Amenadiel's misdiagnosis of chlamydia by a doctor in season 3, and I explain all that in my season 5 part 1 ending video. So what do you think about these theories for the show's final two seasons, and do you have any theories of your own on how the series will end? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Tap left to watch my next Lucifer video in Season 5 playlist, or tap right for another video you're sure to like. And if you enjoyed this, a thumbs up and a share are hugely appreciated. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee ki movie lovers!